We all complain about ratings when we talk about TV. How are our favorite shows doing? This Snoke's ratings are trash! But how is everyone actually faring? And perhaps more interestingly, what's the lowest rated channel on TV? Ratings can be an interesting metric to look at. Nielsen places some boxes into some homes, data gets spat out, and the information gets skewed into metrics that undergird the entire formula of linear television. Advertisers want an audience. Networks want money. Advertisers give the networks money to reach an audience. Networks attract an audience by making content and getting people to watch it, and in the process, the ads sandwich with that. The networks then get ratings numbers they can gloat about to advertisers, and the never-ending cycle begins anew. While they certainly are everything, as the content landscape continues to fracture and the definition of success becomes more nebulous, ratings are one of the few barometers we can see as laymen to both measure and understand the performance of a particular channel or network. Some insight, as an enthusiast, is better to have than no insight. Towards the end of 2019, Nielsen dropped one of the biggest, broadest insights we can have, a list of each television network's primetime ratings averages across the entire year. Well, saved the last week or two, but close enough. It is effectively the definitive list, at least to the extent that we can know about, given, again, we're mere laymen, at the success of each television network in an empirical, comparable format. Beyond the spin and press releases, beyond the skewing and butchering of the numbers by each individual network, this list is basically as objective as it gets. So what do the numbers look like? Before we get to who's last, and definitely not least, let's get a feel for things by checking out how some of the more successful channels and bigger TV brands are doing. The major broadcast networks are, as always, the biggest, most generally attractive tents, and in 2019 they still did respectably. CBS regained the title of America's Most Watched Network in 2019, notching up an average of 7.14 million viewers. It's slightly down last year, but it's not as bad as NBC, which edged out CBS for the top spot in 2018 by about half a million, but has been flung back into a solid second this year, 800,000 behind at 6.33 million. ABC continues its streak as third place in the Big Three, with just under 5.2 million viewers. Fox sits it out at a little over 4.6 million, the CW continues to slug it out in fifth place at just under 1.1 million, and Minor TV is not on here, because my network TV is not a network. I've been over this in another video, which I'll link down in the description. How about cable? As the cynics continue their usual fatalist spiel, what's the actual story? Here's where a selection of major cable names stand. The biggest entertainment cable channel on the list, once we get sports and news out of the way, is actually HGTV at just over 1.3 million viewers, ninth ranked overall. People really love the Property Brothers that much, huh? They're just ahead of USA and Hallmark Channel, of all things, both less than 100,000 viewers behind them. Elsewhere, Discovery Channel and A&E are both over a million each, Reality Magnate's Bravo set at 883,000, Dramatic Edge Lords FX land at 703,000, MTV and Freeform sit on opposite sides of the 600,000 line, and Paramount Network punches in at a paltry 466,000. How about we dive into the ever-competitive microcosm that is Kids TV for good measure? The vocal online community surely thinks they know where the networks stand, but let's see how they really stack up. Between the big three, Nickelodeon stands chief among the kids' nets, though their perch isn't as high as it used to be at just 728,000 viewers. Disney Channel still mounts a valiant effort with an average of 534,000 viewers, but Cartoon Arc has seen the most suffering, sinking to an average of just 386,000 viewers. Disney Channel actually took the bigger relative fall versus 2018, down 31% over CN's 29, but Cartoon Arc has never been in all that strong a position anyway, so its losses tend to hurt harder. Their programming and scheduling choices in recent years certainly haven't helped matters. In the second string of the group, Disney XD remains a shell of its former self at 122,000. Its quasi-rival Nicktoons is outrating at 151,000. Teen Nick is not so lucky at 89,000 viewers, and troubled cartoon rest home Boomerang sits just under six digits at 98,000 viewers. And in the wimpy third tier, Discovery Family managed to eke out 53k, while Universal Kids stands dead last in the kids' space at 31,000 viewers. Discovery Family's lack of the G4 ponies will likely hurt in 2020 and beyond, but the more pressing problem between them is Universal Kids and its lack of original content, a move they made last year which will seriously stunt their chance at attracting eyeballs unless they really get into the acquisitions game. Between the blocks, Nick at Night, despite how useless it's become, still manages to attract 555,000 viewers. Its spin-off TV Land 
and actually garners more eyeballs at 628k, so it makes you wonder why they keep the original land at all. Adult Swim outreaches to both of them at 646,000, being even TV land just barely. But alas, let's get to the good part, the moment you've all been waiting for. What is the lowest rated TV network in all of America? Ranked 142nd and dead last on Nielsen's grand list of rings, averages is... Comedy.tv, one of the many minuscule cable extensions that serve as rerun farms with a glut of syndicated output from Byron Allen's entertainment studios. I guess I can't blame him for trying, but that doesn't mean I approve. The lowest rated TV network for a major media group, however, is MTV Classic, the decimated ruins of the once fairly popular VH1 Classic. It sits fourth from last yet again, averaging just 9,000 viewers a night. Yikes. It's kind of sad how this channel just dive-bombed, but as I've said before, retro does not rate, so the network's original concept as a home for previous MTV originals was just asking for disaster. Its current status as the TV equivalent of a The Blankies to Now radio station is certainly not helping it much. Also in the doldrums is Fuse at 29,000. Once the anti-MTV is that network's challenge have set in, but now just like it, but with a lifestyle skew. Even the sibling channel it launched in fall 2015, FM, which was meant to take over the music output, has now also become an entertainment outlet quite similar to Fuse. Guess you either die on brand, or you live long enough to see yourself change format. If you want to see more insights like this, make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss new explorations in the world of television every single week. You can watch more from me right up here or down in the description, like my discussions of My Network TV and Nick at Night. I'm Benzie Johnson Jr., I'm enthusiastic about television, and I'll see you next time.